if they blow a hole in my backyard Everyone is gonna run away And the creeks won't flow to the great lake below Will the water in the well still be okay? Rock News! Hello, and welcome to Rock News! And not the kind that you play, the kind that you study. My name is Lauren the Hammer, and to my right is Mary the Spade. And together, we break it down for you. Today on Rock News, there are many interesting topics. A quick highlight of today's events are bacteria munching on turds in the Annapolis Valley, geese taking over farm fields in Belle Isle Marsh, two unidentified males go on a rampage in minivans, If you see them, please give them my number. It's 5420005. And most importantly, today's weekly feature of Leave Your Mark. An epic struggle between rock and water. How much can we get and how much will we give? Do -do 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 -do. The story takes place in the heart of the Windsor Wildlands, in the Fall Brook Quarry, a once pristine geologist's dream. The land is renowned for its pure silica veins, much talked about in the glassmaking world. The quarry, which is roughly half a kilometer in length, has already undergone a heated past full of pressure, is now being subjected to more change. There has been recent interest by commercial powers to drill a well in the quarry area. The question everyone ask, is asking is, where will the best water come from and what are the risks involved? Continuing on with the Insider's edition of Leave Your Mark and the Fallbrook Quarry Crisis. Another question that's on all of our minds is, what are the geologists doing? Field reporter Patty Askelot Know a Little is with Mr. Rocky McRockerson, head geologist of the world, to provide the answers. This is Patty Askelot Know a Little, and I'm here with Mr. Rocky McRockerson. So, Mr. McRockerson, what is the first step when faced with such a dilemma? Well, when I first arrive at a site, I'm going to analyze it. I like to take a good look around. At least 45 minutes. I like to get a rough idea of what's going on in the area. My goal at the site is to figure out what the geological history is. It's a story dating back millions of years. And one can unravel the history through the evidence laying all around them. Once I have a grasp on the history, I'd like to apply it to the present plan. How do you figure out that history? Well, you look for change. The rocks around you change and represent different depositional environments. For example, if I see a rock with lots of carbon that's black, that tells me that at the, at the time the land was rich in organic matter. Why does it matter what type of rock it is? Aren't all rocks the same? Oh, no, 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 no. Common misconception. Different rock types have many different properties. For example, they have different hardness and different porosity. Minerals also are specific to each rock type. We have to consider different rock properties if we are going to use the rocks for our benefit. So, do you have to, like, drill down to see these different kind of rocks? Comic misconception number two. Rocks don't always stay in the same place once they are deposited. There are many geological processes happening above and below the surface that cause deformation, resulting in changes such as tilting and folding. In the field, we try to understand these changes by taking a little thing called the dip and strike. We use a compass to measure the angle and direction that the rock is tilted in comparison to a horizontal surface. Can you show me this dip and strike? Well, yes, I can. You take your handy little compass here, 360 degrees of an angle, 
And what you do is, you take your handy little example of a fake surface of rock. This is just for in the lab. Okay, I get it. Okay, yeah, you get it. So, you find the horizontal plane right here, and you match your compass up like this on the horizontal plane. I hold it this way because I follow the right hand rule. Then, when you make a reading, you take this handy little dial right here. Can you see that? Yes. And you match this red arrow up so that the red is in the shed. Oh, so like that red arrow with that bottom red arrow? Yes. Perfect. Oh. You are a quick learner. Then, you put it like this and you read the angle. So this is approximately a degree of 342. That is the strike. Okay. Now, secondly, we need to take the dip. To take the dip, you put the compass like this. Okay. This arrow here will hang to a different degree, which tells you how much the rock is tilted from the horizontal plane. So this is dipping about 50 degrees. All right. All right. Good. I'm glad you understand. It's a very important concept in geology. That's an important concept, but why do you care about the dip and strike? Well, the dip and strike gives us key insights into the geological processes such as uplift and erosion, which have occurred in the past. Also, when we are considering drilling into the earth, we can't see underneath it hundreds of meters, so we try and map out different formations underlying the surface of the earth to know what kind of rock we will come in contact with. So, I've quickly drawn out this handy little diagram here. <clears throat> yeah. This is the surface. Underlying the surface are different types of rocks, as you can see by the red stripes and the blue X's. Okay. Different types. Yeah, different types of rock. So, if we want to drill a well into this type of rock, yeah. we can't start in this type of rock because it's slanting downwards. So, we'd have to drill starting here, 100 meters down to reach an aquifer or the type of rock you want right here. I'll draw it out quickly. Oh. So I can't just start in that rock if I want that rock? Nope. You gotta go down. So, here. Oh. Well, starting in the red, ending in the blue squares. Wow, neato! Alright, well this is Patty Athlot No Little. And this for this week, leave your mark. Back to you in the studio, Hammer and Spade. Guns. We have analyzed the data and determined the best site for a proposed well 100 meters deep at Fallbrook Quarry. Being the experts that we are, we know that the slate layer is not a desirable source rock. It most likely contains components such as arsenic and other heavy metals. Once this rock comes in contact with water, the components will be liberated and available for uptake by humans. We can't even consider drilling into the metamorphic layer of slate because it has close to zero porosity and therefore will not yield enough water for a well. The most desirable rock is an area of mature sandstone. As sandstones have high porosity and are most likely inert in nature, there are two sandstone beds to consider. Ideally, the well should be positioned to draw from the more mature sandstone, as immature sandstones can degrade and release undesirable ions into the water. We know what type of rock we want to access our well from, mature sandstones, but we must consider tilting and stratigraphy of the rocks since we are drilling 100 meters deep. We therefore need to drill our well into the immature sandstone through the slate in order to reach the mature sandstone that is high in quartz which will act as our source rock for water. To ensure no contamination of water from the slate or immature sandstone, the well will need to be cased. That is all for tonight for Leave Your Mark. We hope you learned the important lesson of Before you access the flow, you gotta know what's below. Hey Hammer, do you know what time it is? Not nice, babe, what time is it? It's hammer time. Nee 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 n